Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, Steve Powell from Deepridge. Uh, and for those of you that know us, we're, you could say, sort of part of the furniture with Cuba, but they're fantastic supporters of ours. Um, as James said there, it's obviously a good diversification tool. So, um, yeah, certainly Cuba's a fantastic option for you guys. Um, for those that know us, obviously you can see there we are fully focused in the tech and life sciences space. And a few slides time you'll see to, as to why we focus now in that space. I mean, it was mentioned there about capital preservation, asset backs, no longer really been an option. So um, it's obviously really is on the forefront at the moment, the EIS and SEIS space. So before I talk about the regulatory information, high risk, etc., for your clients, which obviously you're aware of, um, just to talk about the team here at Deepridge. So the background, um, top left, you probably can't see the name at the back there, but take my word for it, Ian Warwick, uh, MD. Uh, the head office is based in Chester, so the company was uh, formed in 2010. Um, he worked on NASDAQ for a number of years and got some various contacts. Uh, for those of you that are happy at the moment, the Liverpool are obviously top of the league. Rick Parry, you can see in there, um, he's a close friend of Ian's and formed the company. And Well, there were three when we started and now it's now 46 at Deepridge. And that's in a 10-year space, so it's certainly reflected on us as a company. And the Supervisory invest, invest, sorry, Investment Committee um, consists of a lot of professors, doctors. So where I said about life sciences and tech spaces, it really does reflect on how we get our investing companies through. And we've got a few success stories I'll mention as well. I um, appreciate we've got about five minutes. So I just want to cut straight to, no, I spoke to Simon. He said to keep the main focus here on EIS. We do have other options available. So business relief, IHT solutions. We've got SEIS. <coughs> but our two products here, uh, technology growth. Um, which is our sort of flagship product. Um, we've got 63 million, which hopefully I've got my numbers right because that's the next slide, and, and the life sciences EIS. So just some key facts at the moment. They're very much as they sound, um, investing in that space. Do come and speak to us at the stand afterwards. Um, we'll give you some more, more details where the funds have been invested, etc. But the key facts, just to get across at this stage, is minimum investment of 10,000 into each portfolio. Um, and probably the key stress at this time of year is the deployment, because if you're looking in this space now for any clients for investment for tax year end, they might be looking at CGT deferral or perhaps obviously carry back. So the thing with Deepridge is that we deploy monthly, and that's probably one of our main USPs, I'd say, in this space. And the question is, to follow on from that, is how we deploy monthly. Um, all of our investee companies have advanced assurance before they join the portfolio, and instead of us at Deepridge raising, say, you know, a few million per investee company and then providing them with that, we, you could say, budget them by giving them a sort of monthly drip feed of funds through. So in the investors' interest, um, this is you know, very much better for them, we feel, uh, hence our model for doing it on a monthly basis. A uh, bit of visibility on our funds under management. So um, obviously, if you've looked around the market at EISs, you probably see some big household names that can put billions to the name, but we focus on EIS and SEIS predominantly, so we don't have VCTs, AMISs, etc. that really build up the, the FUM, and we say it's 156 million. So as I said, you know, look at Life Sciences SEIS, um, it says 10 million, but you're probably aware that investing companies can only raise 150k. So under our belt, we've got over 100 investing companies across the board at this stage. Um, what we look for to invest in, disruptive by nature, so existing markets but new products coming into it. Uh, robust IP, which is obviously key in the medical space. We've got a few medical uh, devices that do have that, which obviously adds massive value to them in the long term. Um, energetic team, I probably would have put a different phrase myself, um, but it's more, <laughs> more, of an, more, of an, more of an entrepreneurial team, let's say. Those are you know, obviously looking to grow their company alongside us because we sit on the board of the investee companies, so we help them actually grow, and obviously if they've got that ambition behind them, Hence the, the word energetic, but I'd have put an ambitious myself. Um, globally scalable. Now, again, going back to the asset backed uh, a couple of years back, you would have seen you know, crematoriums, you know, wedding venues in that space. We're looking to have, say, medical devices, but actually look on a worldwide, worldwide scale. And again, HM, HMRC, advanced assurance, I've already mentioned. Uh, one of our success stories, uh, Sky Medical, was in tech growth portfolio. Um, the reason why it was in tech is because it was with us from day one in 2013 when we launched it, uh, rather than life sciences because we launched that portfolio in 2016. Um, we sold this, or the offer came from the Canadian distributor for 
the product at £1.85 a share and it, obviously you can see it's partial exit because um, a letter was written to all Deepridge shareholders would they like to exit some came at different share rounds so hence the two to four times return um, it was simply you know sign a letter and uh, return if you'd like to sell so we like it's partial exit it's um you know it's not a full exit but a partial exit is potentially is sort of a better offer to the investor um, and just to summarize just key as to why you know consider deepridge so the immediate interest i've mentioned swift deployment of funds uh, maximum tax efficiencies for investors now we don't charge fees to investors we charge the investing companies so the immediate interest is, you know, the question you say, what fees do you charge? Um, you know, for round numbers, if 100,000 was placed or we received that via Cuba, it'd be the full amount that's actually deployed, which, of course, the tax relief is maximised in that instance. And the longer-term interests. So invest in genuine growth-focused companies. As I said, capital preservation asset-backed isn't around anymore. So HMRC, like what we do, invest in the entrepreneurial space. Um, the, obviously, a phrase you might have heard of is knowledge-intensive as well, which our investing companies all qualify for. And again, just another longer term aspect to look for is obviously the track record now. Um, just a couple there, um, again, just to read them out. Sky Medical, just under five times return, and iPipeline, uh, both of which were part of technology growth. <coughs> and just a bit of transparency on fees. Um, I know, similar uh, to Keelan, who will be next on Simvan, a similar model, we charge investing companies, but I don't want to focus too much on this because uh, you obviously come and speak to me afterwards, but... Um, just to give a bit of clarity there, but um, yeah, hopefully speak to you uh, a bit later. But on our website, we've got the investee companies if you want a bit of clarity on where the funds are going. So thanks for your time, and I'll pass across to thanks, James. Thanks, Steve.